Hi guys, it's Kira from Plaid, and we are here with a very special edition of Paint Night Live. We have the one and only Priscilla Hauser with us here tonight. <laughs> so all of you, I'm sure, know who Priscilla Hauser is, but if you don't, she is the first lady, the queen of decorative painting. <laughs> this woman has been around since the beginning of and founded decorative painting, the Society of Decorative Painters. So we have such a privilege for her to be with us tonight on Let's Paint Live. She's going to teach us uh, fall chrysanthemum in just about an hour. And you guys, this is, I mean, you are a legend in the decorative painting world. So we are so happy that you are here and part of our Let's Paint team. So if you guys are brand new to Let's Paint, um, check out platonline.com slash let's paint. We have amazing content. We have free education, online videos, tutorials. We've got Andy Jones, who Priscilla has mentored and taught all these years. Right. We've got Chris Williams. We have Priscilla. We have Donna Dewberry's series of her flowers of the month. We have a ton of content for you. So enjoy tonight, but check out platonline slash let's paint. And while you're watching, you can either watch live and paint along with us or you can watch after this Facebook post or after the Facebook live on Facebook you can watch on demand or tomorrow it'll be live on our YouTube channel so if you can't paint with us live you can go back and actually watch on YouTube and paint along at your own time so you have a few minutes for yourself this weekend or in the next couple weeks getting into that fall spirit go ahead and check out our let's paint YouTube channel because you can get all this content and all our other paintings that we have so we are super excited again. Let's paint. We have um, Priscilla Hauser in the house, a legend in decorative <laughs> painting. I'm so I'm excited. I'm going to say I'm that a you. million times because I am so honored to be Aww. here with you. And we are going to paint fall chrysanthemums. Um, and just so you know, Priscilla is going to walk you through this. But we actually started out with a 12 by 12 wood canvas. Right. Right. And we went ahead and base coated two coats. Two coats with our yellow citron. Yellow citron. See, she knows what she's talking about. <laughs> so we're using our folk art paint, which is amazing. And she's going to walk us through. And if you are watching live or just tuning in, go ahead and comment where you're watching from. If you have any questions, we'll try to answer them live. And we are so excited to get started. Well, I'm the one that's excited. And do you know how tough it is to stand next to this <laughs> beautiful young gal? Priscilla, you know. you're like my goal. This uh, is what I want to be when I grow up. <laughs> you know that I have been with Plaid for more than 50 years. A lot more than 50 years. So Amazing. I'm at home when I come. Oh, and I'm so excited. I love it. It's going to be so fun tonight. When Andy called and said I'd get to do this evening uh, program if I wanted to, I thought, rock and roll! <laughs> <laughs> you guys are in for a treat. That's that's right. We're all in for a treat. Yeah. Okay. Well, let's get started. Let's and we'll paint. check in. Yeah, let's paint. <laughs> okay. Well, the first thing we want to do, of course, is prepare our surface. And that has been done for everybody here in the studio. And the pattern has been transferred as well. Uh, if you have never transferred a pattern before, you can put chalk on the back of your pattern or you can use a piece of white paper. Uh, to transfer the pattern. I will not go into that right now. And everybody, just so you know, the pattern is in the link below. So if you click that, you can get this pattern. You can download and print it. And you can also find all the supplies that Priscilla is going to be using in the link below. So you can click that and get the product list and you can actually just purchase so you want to check that out. They make it easy for you to yep. find and get everything, yep. which is just wonderful. Absolutely. Okay. Well, the first thing that I'm going to do is just mention the wet palette so that everybody will know I'm using one. You are not using one this evening. I do not like to be without one. And it's a special paper and a very wet sponge, and I won't go into it, but it will actually allow my acrylics Ouch. to stay wet the whole time I work on them. And I like to mix on a star foam plate or a wax coated palette. And uh, so anyway, I wanted to identify these things for you. I'm going to start this evening by putting some of this beautiful folk art paint, which I have used for years and years and years on my palette. 
and I never use the holes. The holes get in my way. So I just unscrew the lids and I'll squeeze some paint out onto the palette. That is sap green that I put out on the palette. And I'm going to put some yellow citron, which is the color that we have base coated these beautiful wooden canvases with. And then, you know what I Is it gonna mess you up if we put your palette here so everybody at home can see it? No. All right, absolutely you're so not. So I just love it. Fun and dandy. All right, sorry guys, we're gonna we're live, so we're gonna adjust. And will you find some house of green medium for me, please? Absolutely. Very good. Okay, now I'm going to take some yellow medium and I'm going to put some yellow medium onto my palette. And then I'm going to put some burnt umber, which is a wonderful folk art brown, onto my palette. And since you see my palette, you'll notice I have a couple of little dishes here. And everyone that's painting out here with me this evening has a neat little lid. And I like that. For Here's some Hauser in. Green. I'm going to keep scooching Thank you, you guys Hauser over. Green. Who's that? There you go, ma'am. <laughs> there we go. Everybody wants to see your palette. They got to see everything you're doing. They do. They that's, do. That's, that's, I mean, you're the expert. That's very important. All right. I'm bossy, bossy lady. Going to put a little of the blending gel into this. Now, I, I want you to know that Plaid manufactures all sorts of wonderful products for us, but they manufacture a blending gel and they manufacture a floating medium. Tonight, I'm going to be using the blending gel, and very quickly, I want to tell you the difference between the two. The floating medium is like water. It's like thick water, and it dries very fast. The blending gel, on the other hand, keeps the acrylic paint wet so that you can blend and move the colors together beautifully. Now I've got the Hauser Green Medium, and I'm gonna put some of that out on the palette. And because the chrysanthemum that I have, and we can do the chrysanthemum in any combination of colors we want, and they're just gorgeous. It's such a happy, happy flower to paint. And because I'll be using burnt sienna when I teach you the chrysanthemum, I'm going to put some of that out on the palette. And I'm also going to put some white, titanium white, out on the palette as well. All right, now, I want you all to watch me for just a minute, and then I'm going to say go. And I want you to undercoat the three leaves that you have with the house or green medium. So I'm going to pick up, oh, a number 12, number 14 brush, a fairly good size brush. I'm going to rinse in the water that's over here in my brush basin. I'm going to blot on my absorbent rag and that absorbent rag is very important. And I love Andy's blue rags because they go <laughs> and they suck the water right out of that brush so that you don't have water that runs. And another thing I want to call to your attention is the metal ferrule. And this is the metal ferrule. And when you go to your water, often you have water on the ferrule. And if you don't be careful and be sure the water's off, it can run down and go blob. Now before I do this, I've got a piece of illustration board over here. And I have a Sharpie. How many of you know what scribble means? If I tell you to scribble, will you know what to do? Okay. Well, scribbling kind of goes like this. But when we do this chrysanthemum leaf, it's a jagged edged leaf. So we want to go very slowly. I'm going to show you this scribbling back and forth, kind of around the corner, scribble back and forth. And this will put a pretty jagged edge on the leaf. Leaves are everybody's dilemma. I adore them and I adore teaching them. There's so many different kinds of them and they're easy to do when you know how. So there is the scribble technique. All right, now I'm going to come back and I'm going to pick up the house of green medium on my brush. Oh, we're going to skew you back over. And I am going to use my blending gel. Perfect. Now, rarely 
unless for some reason I have to, do I use a brush to put on the blending gel. I'll put my finger in the blending gel and I'll come over to the leaf and I'll just kind of rub in a circle. And of course, everyone wants to know why, 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 why do you do that? Well, the reason that I do it is because I can feel how much or how little is there. And I can also feel how much it's soaking in to the paint. And I can't do that with a brush. So if it's a very tiny area, obviously I can't get my finger into it. I want to warn all of you here in the studio with me tonight, be very careful about the gel. It's magic, it's fabulous, and you're gonna love it. But if you get too much of it, you're not gonna like me, you're not gonna like the gel. So to start out with, I'd rather you have a little bit too little of it than too much because we can always go back and add more. But if you get too much, is there something you can do? There's always something you can do. Yep. So first of all, I'm just gonna pause you because we're using the blending gel. So if you have never used the blending gel, yes. why do you love the blending gel? Because it keeps your paint wet. Keeps it your paint lets wet. you move one color into another. So it helps blend easily. and all that. So yes. it's oh, definitely yes. necessary. You're gonna see. Okay. Well, it's very necessary okay. if you're blending two or more colors okay. together. Perfect, okay. so that's great if somebody has never painted uh -huh. that they need the blending gel because Priscilla told them. They need, no, not <laughs> <laughs> No, they need that blending gel if you want to blend okay. two or more colors that's together great. and keep the paint with. Perfect. It holds it holds your paint open. Okay. Okay, now I was saying if you get too much on, I just like to take a tissue. I don't have too much on, but I don't want you to be afraid of it. There's nothing to be afraid of. This is really easy to do once you understand. Now I'm gonna feel it again and I don't know how well you can see it, but my finger slides. My fingers will slide easily over this but there's not big globs of it on. So I'm going to touch my water, blot on that absorbent rag, stroke, bounce it, bounce it, bounce that brush in the green, not too much, and then I'm gonna come over here. Always turn your work so that you're comfortable. You always want to be comfortable. Now watch how I scribble. See how I scribble and then kind of you around the corner? and then scribble slowly, slowly, not big scribble marks, but just kind of wiggle and scribble a little bit. Yeah. I'm going to turn the brush around. And what color are you using, Priscilla? House of Green Medium. House of Green House Medium. House of Green Medium. Again, having worked with plaid for all the years I did, I got to help develop a lot of colors many, many years ago. So it's funny, someone asked, is this named after Priscilla? Of course! Of course it is! <laughs> <laughs> okay, now using a light touch, just smooth that out a little bit. So I want you all to go ahead now, watch out for the gel, just a little bit of gel, and then start scribbling neatly and carefully, not big lines, on the chisel. This is the chisel, edge of the brush, and scribble that on, and then roll it around the corner, kind of a huge stroke around the corner. Pick up a little more paint, again on the chisel, edge of the brush, and then stroke and fill in the middle. We want to get that on. I have one more leaf and again fill that brush. Start in scribbling. Scribble. Priscilla, what brush are you using? Oh, it's probably a 12, maybe a 14 flat okay. brush. Perfect. You want to use, uh, I, I like to break the brushes into the size of what I'm painting. And this is a fairly good size leaf. So I want a fairly good size brush. Okay, perfect. And I like to work with small, medium, and large brushes. So I'll give 
the students in the classroom. Just a little bit of time to get that on. Not too much gel. Use a light touch. Scribble, scribble. Look up here again. Yeah, I want to say hi to everybody while you are filling in your leaves. Can I say hi to everyone? You certainly can. Jo I don't. I can't get everybody. You've got so many fans. Joanne, we've got Jeannie, Jill, Bonnie, Judy, Philip, Chris is here. Andy's here. Uh, Maria, Roseanne. So many people are excited to be painting with you. Well, I'm the one that's excited tonight, and absolutely delighted. Can you imagine what a joy it is to say that you've been with a company for more than 50 years? Amazing. <laughs> we are so lucky to have you here and I'm part of our Let's Paint program. So part of Let's Paint, if you're not familiar, we have, if you go to platonline.com slash let's paint, we have a whole free online education program that Chris and Andy and Priscilla and Donna have developed for you. There are amazing tutorials, step-by-step -step videos, everything if you've never picked up a paintbrush or you are an expert painter and you've been painting with Priscilla for 50 years. Um, there is something more for, than that. <laughs> there is something for everybody and we have put together two great Let's Paint kits so you can get all your materials right there on platonline.com slash let's paint. We also have all these Let's Paint live video tutorials you can watch on on demand on our YouTube channel. So you can check out after this live, you can check out Priscilla's Fall Chrysanthemum or you can check out all our previous Let's Paint videos. So you can take some time for yourself, get together with your friends and you can paint along with us. Okay, now I'm kind of peeking over John's shoulder to see what's going on out there and it looks like most of you have your undercoating done. So I'm going to ask for your attention on the big screen for a minute and I am going to grab my piece of paper and my Sharpie and I want you to notice that on the pattern that has been transferred to your board, do you see the ball? Do you see a big ball? Okay. And then you see a line down the middle of the ball. It's important to note those so that if I draw that right here, I have the ball, part of the flower, and then I have all these lower strokes that are down below. Now it's so important that you pay attention to me now and let those undercoated leaves be drying. I'm going to use a round brush. This is a number eight round brush. Not a flat anymore, but a round. I'm going to pick up my palette knife and a little bit of water. And let me just take a little bit of sap green here. Now, usually when I'm mixing paint to a flowing consistency, I do it off the palette. I'll use a piece of glass to mix on. I'll use a styrofoam plate. I'll use a wax coated palette. And I want to mix this to a flowing consistency. Consistency is everything. And there are as many different consistencies for painting as there are oven temperature settings for baking. And you've absolutely got to do and learn what those consistencies are. There are two partners that equal beautiful painting. One of the partners is brush strokes, and we're going to be doing brush strokes now, or at least one brush stroke. The other partner is dry brush blending, blending two or more colors together. Now that I have this mixed to a looser consistency. Now does a uh, plastic or metal palette knife matter? Um, it just depends. Okay. For, for me, yeah. no plastic. No plastic, metal. But people love the plastic palette knives. And you know what I say? Be comfortable. Use what right. you like. Yep. Enjoy what you like. Yep. And, and I've used a metal palette knife all my life. Okay. But if I don't have one, you Plastics bet I'm going right. to plastic. All right. You bet. Now I want to tell you about this real quick because this is something that I want you all to, to know. I have some inexpensive baby wipes over here. I go through a lot of them. And 
into the baby wipes I've poured about half a bottle of alcohol and they're just wonderful because if I've mixed and I have a dirty palate knife it's so much fun to take that alcohol wipe and it just cleans it right off also when I cover myself with paint it cleans me up pretty quickly too I try to always have those right there at hand all right, now, one other little tip I want to show you is the tape. And I want to put a flag on. Let me see where my tape has gone. The tape was here on the table. I have a tape eater. Okay. Well, I, I got the tape. The I got tape the tape. Right there. Oh, I'm so <laughs> Thank you. dun dun dun, dun, dun. Now, the reason that I'm going to put a piece of tape on the handle of my brush is that you will be able to tell if I twist or turn the brush in my fingers. You'll be able to see what's happening. And there's no twisting or turning of the brush on the comma stroke. And there's, it's, oh, there's so many different brush strokes to learn. And there are not as many, though, as there are letters in the alphabet. And it's actually easier to learn to do the brush strokes much easier than it was to learn to form the letters of the alphabet and sign your name. Okay, here we go. I'm going to touch the water. I'm going to blot on the rag and I'm going to come over here and bounce my brush. Bounce it, bounce it, bounce it. I'm going to turn it over to the other side and bounce it, bounce it, bounce it. What color are you using? This is sap green. Sap green. I'm going to keep asking. <laughs> I want you Everybody to. wants to know. Yeah, I think that's good. Sap green. But this is a practice color right now. Of course. I, this could be any color that you wanted to learn and Got practice it. a brush stroke with. So watch now. This is a comma stroke. And if you feel your brush is a little bit too wet, I didn't particularly, but I wanted you to see me blot. I'm going to angle towards the left corner of this piece of illustration board. Touch, apply pressure, start lifting and dragging, lifting and dragging, lifting and dragging, lifting and dragging, and pulling to a point. Touch, press, lift and drag to a point. Touch, press, lift and drag to a point. Touch, press, start to pull and lift. Don't touch, press, hold, and then lift to a point. And lots of people do that when they're first learning. And I don't want you to be a picker up too quicker. Sometimes people will touch, press, start to pull, and pick up way too quick. So you want to practice and practice and practice comma strokes, angling to the left and angling to the right. And while I'm not turning this because John is close with the camera, remember to always be in the most comfortable position and turn one way turn it and go the other way because people will say oh my gosh if if I'm right-handed I can make one that angles to the left but then I have to twist like this to go the other way you don't all you have to do is turn what you're working on okay all right now if we had a lot of time I would have you practice those strokes. You have to understand it before you can do it. You have to understand your consistency. What is the consistency? Everything. Come on, what is the consistency? Everything. Creamy, flowing Aww. consistency so that the paint flows beautifully from the brush. Okay, switching gears on you again and some of you are still undercoating and that's fine. Take your time, but remember, I want your leaf to be fairly dry. And sometimes you want to put a second coat of undercoat on to make it very opaque. And you're welcome to do that. I'm not going to do it myself, but those of you that are here in the studio may put a second coat on. Listen carefully. If you put a second coat on, if you put a second coat on, be sure the first coat is good and dry. Otherwise, it's going to lift on you. And you don't have to use the blending gel on the second coat. Because if you do, that blending gel is going to pick that first coat up.
Why? Because the paint may be dry to the touch, but it hasn't cured. And I want to, to explain the word cure because it's one of the most important things that I can teach you. If you fall down and you skin your knee and it bleeds, it's wet, like paint is wet. When a scab forms, it's dry, like paint is dry. And when the new skin grows, it's cured, like paint is cured. How can you tell? That's tough. It depends upon the temperature in the room. This room is pretty chilly tonight. That being said, it's going to take longer to, uh, uh, to dry. If I turn a hair dryer on this with hot blowing air, it will dry much faster. Okay, so we're not taking time for it to cure. I'm going to take my number 12 or 14 flat brush again. I'm not going to use any blending gel and I'm just going to pick up a little burnt umber on one side of the brush. You see that? On one side of the brush. Sometimes I'll take a little sap green. Sometimes if I want to take a little burnt sienna, I'll take that too. And I'll blend on both sides of the brush. Then I'm just going to come over here and pat a shadow on at the base of my leaf like you're seeing me do right here. And when that shadow dries, I have a name for it that I hope you all will remember. And I call it an anchor, an anchored shadow. And the reason for that being is it's going to dry very quickly so that when I come back to do any painting on it, it will not move. Now, if my leaves were good and dry, I could float, and technically, I'm floating too, but I don't want to put any water or any more blending gel down on it because it hasn't had time to cure. Have you got that? Have you got that in those beautiful heads out there? Okay, now, I talked to you about scribbling. Watch me scribble. I'm going to scribble, 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 scribble right over the undercoat. I'm using the burnt umber and I have a little bit of sap green. John, come in close so they can see the scribbling. Notice I turned it around on the chisel edge of the brush, scribbling, 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 scribbling. I haven't touched my water. I don't want it to run. I don't want my paint to lift. I'm going to come back and I'm going to start to scribble on another one and kind of view it around the corner and scribble some more. And I'm going to stop and wipe my brush and I'm going to pick up a little bit of white on the brush. And I'm going to do the very same thing. I want to put just a little bit of white on the brush and just scribble and have just a little bit of light right there like that. Okay, then I'm going to take just a little more Hauser Green Medium and very carefully, come close John, I'm just going to pat on the flat surface of the brush. I'm not up here chiseling and digging in like with a shovel, but just patting kind of lightly like that. I want to be careful with the blending gel, but I'm going to put just the corner of my brush in the gel and just lightly, lightly, lightly. shade that a little bit, just softening the shadow. I'm going to soften right here where the brown meets the white. Just soften that a little bit. And we're just going to keep this leaf very, very simple. 
like so. And I'll go ahead quickly and do all of my leaves that way and you go ahead as well and do the same thing. So once again, being very careful, not wanting to lift the paint with the water or the gel. I'll go back over the dark. If I want to add a little light, I can. Maybe I want to pick up a little citron. So I can pick a little citron up on the corner of the brush. Maybe I want to add a little yellow. You can add any color that you want to. Just lightly, lightly, lightly touch like so. And then just so softly, softly and lightly blend. And if you need to touch just the tiniest bit of gel, you can, but I'm warning you because it hasn't cured, it could pick right up on you. So be very gentle, very careful with the amount of gel you use. One more leaf, quickly done. Filling my brush back up with the umber. Sometimes I take a little sap green on the same side of the brush with the umber. I'm going to go right back over my shadow the and then the I'll start scribbling again. The leaf will frame our flower. They're very, very important. And people sometimes say, oh, I wish I didn't have to do all the leaves. Let me tell you something. I can teach you to paint gorgeous leaves and you'll just love them. And I hope that through the wonderful lessons that are being offered here by all the wonderful teachers that come to teach you, that you will learn to love and paint and enjoy the leaves as much as I do. Priscilla, while you're painting, I'm just gonna scoot you over so everybody at home can see you because we're missing some of the good stuff. Well, I don't want to miss I know, good stuff. you're so good. We don't want to miss a second of it. I'm gonna scoot you right over. There you go, ma'am. Perfect. Thank you very much. Now I'm going to touch just a little bit of the gel, but oh, it's so little because I know if I put too much gel on this that I'm going to pick up. And when I blend, I'm not digging in on the chisel edge. I'm on the flat surface like this blending. I'm just going to tone down this white a little bit with my dirty brush. Do you see how I'm just washing over that white? a little just to soften the look of it just a little bit okay now the next thing I'm going to do is go to my chrysanthemum so uh, Priscilla yes. someone has a question yes so Joe Walker asks today's lunch and learn the leaves were also painted first should the leaves always be painted first when painting a flower joe thank you for reminding me of that that's very very good if a leaf is underneath if it goes underneath as all these three leaves do you definitely want to paint it first or paint them first because it's not fun to paint the flower first and then try to get the shadow in around all of the petals. That's a great question. It's a wonderful question. Yep. So always, I try to work from the back to the front. There are a few exceptions to that, as there are exceptions to everything in the world of art. But generally, if something's underneath something, that goes first. Okay, okay. So. now. Wait, that answers everyone's question. Very good. All right, now, back to this chrysanthemum. And I'm going to go back to my little drawing right here. And I'll make this line that you all have on your patterns. Let me ask you for all your eyes for a minute. And remember, if something dries, what can you do? Come on. Touch your blending gel just a little bit not the water <laughs> on this technique water is the enemy if you touch that water whoops up it comes but if you touch just a little blending gel it will moisten everything all right now look here i'm going to make comma strokes on the right side 
the commas will angle to the right. On the left side, they're going to angle to the left, and I'm going to do comma strokes all over this mum. But before I can do that, I've got to get all these gorgeous colors down on the chrysanthemum. Remember, I kind of yelled at you and said, consistency is everything. Well, over here, my white has gotten a little bit thick. So I'm going to come to my plate or my waxy palette or a piece of glass, whatever I have, I'm going to thin the paint down. And I have a feeling the way I paint, I'm probably going to want to put a little more white out. I don't like to fool with the holes in the lids. I like to get down and dirty. And with my palette knife, don't piddle. Don't be a paint piddler. Get down and mix that to a nice flowing consistency. I'll pick it up with my palette knife and put it back on the palette. Okay. Watch closely now. I'm going to put my finger in that wonderful blending gel. I'm going to come to the ball and look at this. With my finger, I'm rubbing that gel on the ball. Now you can get crazy with this really quick. That blending gel will take off and bleed badly on you. But you can always, always take a tissue and put it down and press straight down and pick up so that you have excess. You want your finger just to slide over it. Okay, rock and roll. With my finger, I'm going to take a little citron. Of course, this paint is all non-toxic, so I'm perfectly safe. And I'm going to put a little yellow citron at the top, like so. Wipe my finger on my rag. And I'm going to take a little bit of yellow medium and lightly, lightly merge those together. I'm going to take some of this wonderful, wonderful naphthal crimson. It's a beautiful red by folk art. And there I squeezed through the hole after I told you I didn't do that. And I'm going to put on some red. Now, the red's so pretty and it's so tempting to put on too much. So be careful. Then over to the burnt sienna, with the burnt sienna on my finger, I'm going to rub that burnt sienna on and just kind of lightly merge all that together. You don't want to make mud. You don't want to over blend and it's just on the ball. There's petals that hang down below. It's just on the ball. I'm going to grab my alcohol wipe because I'll have paint all over me, which doesn't bother me if I don't. And now I'm going to take that wonderful big round brush and I'm going to touch my water. What am I going to do? Blot on my soft absorbent rag or towel. Then I'm going to stroke in the white. Turn the brush over on both sides. A little bit of green in it. That doesn't bother me one bit. If there was a lot of green in it, it might bother me a whole lot. All right. Again, your attention. <coughs> Think about that line that goes right down the middle. So on this side, I'm going to make a comma stroke that angles that way. On the other side of the line, I'm going to make a comma stroke that angles the other way. Now, look, I've picked up some of that wet color on the brush so that when I make another stroke, it shades. Do you see how pretty that color is and that shading is? One, two, three, I want to hear, yes! <laughs> okay, I'm going to come to the other side and make a comma. And I'm not wiping my brush. Look at the shading. Look how perfectly lovely it is with those comma strokes. Now, dear, dear students, I put enough paint in my brush, which was the right consistency, that I did not have to pick up any more paint. 
and I'm thinking constantly about this line that's coming right down the middle. So on this side, I'll angle to the right. On this side, I'll curve to the left. And that paint stays wet because of our wonderful blending gel. Here we go again. Touch, press, lift and drag, 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 touch, press, lift and drag. My flag's not waving. I'm not twisting or turning. So what happens if you don't get enough paint and you run out of paint? Don't be afraid to come back in and pick up a little more white. Your brush is going to have some color on it, so you won't be putting exactly a pure white stroke. I'd like to think that your paint was the right consistency and you filled your brush enough with paint that you did not run out. But you will see these first strokes will be a little whiter because I did pick up more paint. And somebody will ask, well, what about the middle? Well, just on that middle line, you just kind of determine yourself which way you want to curve the stroke, whether it's kind of to the right or to the left. And I'm going to stop right there. And I'm going to turn the chrysanthemum upside down. You can do blue chrysanthemums. You can do purple chrysanthemums. You can do them in any combination of colors that you want to. I usually choose three colors. I had the citron. Actually, I had four on this. I had the citron. I had the medium yellow. I had the naphtha crimson. And I had the burnt sienna. You'll be in trouble if you have too much gel down. But if that happens to you, there isn't such a thing as trouble. Simply blot, lift it off, always wiping in if you're lifting off, or wiping off, don't smear out, but pull in is what you want to do. And then start over again. You cannot mess anything up so badly that it can't be done again. That's my absolute promise to you. Okay, the next thing I'm going to do is back to my finger. I've always loved to do a little finger painting. And I'm going to rub more gel on the lower petals now. Someone has a question, Priscilla. Yes. Why do you use titanium white instead of wicker white? Just a preference? Why do I take titanium white instead of wicker white? Yeah. Well, it's a wonderful question. And it's, as I'm stumbling over my tongue, blah, 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 blah. Yeah. It is, it's all in the chemistry of the paint. The whites are actually different colors. They're different consistencies. Uh, they, they actually work a bit differently. And I have always used a titanium white because it's just a good, standard workable white. Right. But you could use wicker white. Absolutely. Yeah. Any of the folk art paint, any of the folk art whites you yes, can use. Yes, yeah. yes. It's just your preference. Yes, and well, I won't get into other things, yep. but, uh, but one of these days I'll get into other things because I hope I get to come back. I think I'm going to get I to mean, come back. I mean, of course. And so, we'll, we'll just, I love your questions. I love to answer your questions and we can just get into all kinds of things and learn, learn, learn. And you know, when I found out about this Let, Let's Paint program and what Andy and Chris and Donna were doing, I was so excited because painting is for everyone. It is for everyone. And there's something I want to share with you all because life has all kinds of bumps along the way. And for me, my little saying is, with brush in hand, my mind empties of its sorrows, and the beauty in life smiles. So you keep smiling, and you keep painting. I lost my forever loved husband 10 years ago, and for two or three years, I really didn't want to paint. But then I remembered what I'd always told everyone else to do. 
and I picked up the brushes and I started painting again and plaid was right there for me and got me going again so with brush in hand my mind empties of its sorrows oh my god and the beauty in life smiles okay I'll stop this now and I'll come back and I'm going to pick up just a little bit of citron and watch there goes a little bit of citron on those lower petals and I'm going to pick up just a little bit of yellow just like I did the upper ball a little bit of red and a little bit of what class burnt sienna <laughs> okay we'll put the burnt sienna on watch out for the gel if the gel's too wet what do we do we take our tissue put it straight down in blot and then back to my wonderful big round brush well hello little bud good fly away i don't want you in the paint okay now remember that line remember that line so i'm going to start in now with these beautiful comma strokes notice i'm painting upside down i've turned it so that i'm at a comfortable angle a comfortable position to do the painting and if i don't want to take the time to refill my brush i'm just going to turn the brush over to the other side and continue on like this and you see the beautiful shading that comes with it and you can just add a stroke wherever you think it needs it i'm going to turn this back towards me now and look at it and i'm just going to add a stroke here and there maybe fill in a little bit right here in the center and maybe a little stroke over here on one side the other side i'll even it up a little bit and now the leaves have framed the chrysanthemum and we have a wonderful wonderful chrysanthemum and i hope like heck you all do too and it'll be fun for me to look and see hey hey out there hold them up let me see what you very good oh that's cheating she held up the back side that's cheating don't do that okay who's my pretty lady there on the end okay I, you need more color in it too much white you just need to wipe in put a little more gel down put your colors back on and not quite as heavy with your white I'm thrilled to death to see what you're doing. Okay, now. So I want to tell everybody, I'll wait till we have the camera over here. But Priscilla said, we want to see what everybody is painting. So whether you're doing fall chrysanthemum or you've done another painting with Let's Paint, don't forget to hashtag plaid crafts and also hashtag paint with plaid because this way we can see what everybody's doing and we can also share their work and comment on it so and that's so helpful yep. and so encouraging sometimes people feel a little uncomfortable or maybe a little embarrassed about doing that no no yep. please don't do that yep. we all have to learn and andy and chris and 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 donna and myself will get in there whenever we can to make helpful comments right. and you can always go to the video and watch it yep. over and over Absolutely. and Practice over. Practice makes perfect and also we have a Facebook group so you can join that and That's where Andy right. and Chris and Donna and Priscilla are all active in there and they will help you and they will comment and they want to see your work so don't forget to check that out also. Please don't be uncomfortable about that. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Now one of my signatures through the years is something that I call curly cues or swiggles. And I want to fill all this space. I could have put the mum down in the corner and written the word chrysanthemum or blessings or I love you or whatever I wanted to on it. But since this is located in the middle, I've grabbed a liner brush. And this is a number two liner brush that I have that comes to a very good point. Then I'm going to take my palette knife 
and some of this sap green. Now, I say liner, you say thin. thin. Yay! I say liner, you say thin. thin. And when you use your liner brush, the paint has to flow from the hairs of this lovely brush just as ink would flow from a pen. So again, I'm going to thin this down with water, my palette knife and water, to almost an ink-like consistency. And with my alcohol wipe, bloop, I've cleaned my palette knife right off. I'll come in and I'm going to stroke and fill that liner brush good and full. I'm going to be sure that I have no water on the metal ferrule. And you can see that brush is really good and full of paint. And it's fun to make a practice run a little bit. I can't put this cardboard down on that wet mum because those strokes are going to be wet for a little while. But again, standing that brush so that it's straight up. Look here, working from the shoulder. Move from the shoulder. Well. And we'll make M's and we'll make W's. Touch my water, blot on my soft absorbent rag, come back, pick up more paint. Now I'm going to put the M and the W together, maybe a double loop, and keep on going. As I have joined golden years, I have developed a little bit of a tremor. And when it first started in, I thought, oh no. And then, no problem at all. It doesn't affect my painting. I've just got to watch all the Cokes and Diet Cokes that I drink <laughs> and the caffeine. I've never been much of a coffee person. So what about these curly cues? I'm going to put the illustration board aside. I'm going to bring my chrysanthemum back into the picture. Fill my brush with that thin paint that's come over here by the leaf. Get loose from the shoulder. Think M's and W's. Light touch. Don't bear down hard. And do those beautiful curly cues with the point of that beautiful liner. I love it! That's gorgeous. I don't want to put oh. too many of them Priscilla, on. what color are you using to do your curly cues? Sap green. Sap green! But I might put a little <laughs> bit of burnt umber in with it. I might put a little bit of burnt sienna in okay. it. But love I it. thought it would be beautiful with the sap green. Sap green. So Gorgeous. That's what I I love chose. the contrast of the sap green and the citron. You're pretty. So beautiful. It really is. Okay. Handle pointing straight towards the ceiling. M's and W's, do, 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 do. Turn it. I want to put one more curly Q on. Fill that brush, good and full of paint. Let's come up here, stand the brush so that it points towards the ceiling. And start in again with the curly Q's. And then sign your name. And I love to use my liner brush to sign my name with a very thin paint. The final thing that I'm going to do is take a toothbrush. And I love to fly spec. And I think fly spec often it fills space. It's kind of an of the time look. And you can fly spec in any color or combination of colors that you want to. So I'm coming over here to my thin paint and rubbing in a circular motion. And then you can grab your practice sheet and I'm pulling my thumb across like so. Can you see that, John? Pulling my thumb across. A tip, sometimes I put my thumb in water first and then I don't get necessarily all that beautiful folk art paint underneath my nail. So, but I didn't do that this time. So let's come over here now. And once you practice this a little bit, you learn to direct it. You can make big ones. You can kind of make streaks. You can make little ones. I love to get on the leaves a little bit, even on the flower. 
a little bit, but it's just optional. It's up to you. And there we have a brush stroke chrysanthemum. So hold yours up, Priscilla. Okay. All right. So you guys, we have just painted fall chrysanthemum with the one and only Priscilla Hauser in just about an hour. So we hope if you were able to tune in live and paint along, or right after this broadcast, you can watch on our Facebook channel and in the Let's Paint Live Facebook group. And also tomorrow it will be on our YouTube channel. So you can check out this and all our other Let's Paint Lives on demand and paint along. Also check out platonline.com because we have a entire education program. A beautiful program. Uh, yes. Education is what it's all about. Yes, I mean, it is the foundation. You, Chris, Andy, Donna have all taught millions and millions of people how to paint. And, and it's free. It is free. And we have pulled together these amazing kits. So the education's free, you get your folk art paint, and you have everything you need to be able to do this, whether you have never picked up a brush before, or you an expert painter that has been painting with Donna and Priscilla and Andy for years. So we are super excited. Thank you so much for being here. I have to preview next month's painting. Priscilla, you will not be here, but I'm sure you will be here again soon to join us because we love having you. We have, I need to duck down and grab this. So on November 7th at 7.30, we are going to be painting Farmhouse Pumpkins. Jesse will be back with us, who is our um, regular Facebook Live, um, Let's Paint Live uh, host and teacher with us. So we'll be painting this awesome painter painting. The event is live on our Facebook page now. So go ahead and RSVP to this event and get all your supplies and be ready for November 7th. So again, don't forget to hashtag all your paintings with hashtag plaid crafts and hashtag paint with plaid so we can see what you've been doing and what Priscilla and everyone else has taught you. And thank you everybody so much for joining us. We hope you all had fun. So thanks guys. Bye. Hey.